What's up viewers? Anthony from The Rock Studio here. I'm gonna do a quick video today about the Seven Circle Audio A12 microphone preamp kit. It's a DIY kit you order from their website. You put it together, you tweak it, you test it, and hopefully it works. Mine worked perfectly. I built two of them. And uh, follow along, it's gonna be a real quick video. I did some time-lapse video during the build and we're gonna talk about it a little bit. And we're gonna talk about the different op-amp options that you have when you build this kit. Hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Here's the Seven Circle Audio website. Click on products, microphone preamp, A12 mic preamp is the one I ordered. I picked the medium size output transformer, which is $269 total. This website contains the schematic, which also comes with the kit, but here you've got to get the build materials and the assembly instructions. I'm pretty sure you can only download those from the website, so get those. And this is what the kit should look like when it's done. Also from the website, you order the chassis, which is eight slot modular frame. If you're interested in getting into building your own recording equipment, be sure to check this website out. It's really awesome. They've got a full range of mic preamps. They have a dual DI and they have a new compressor that's available too. The first step is to check the components in the kit with the build materials. Make sure you have everything. I like to tape small parts to the build material where they belong. Also, the resistors are already taped up. So go ahead and write the component number on the tape. Next step is to start placing the components on the PCB. You generally start with the lowest profile components and work your way up. So here you go with the resistors, put them on the board in the proper order. Then you can flip the board over and start soldering. It doesn't really matter about heat and resistors, but try to be as quick as you can anyway. Clip off the leads nice and flush. Then you keep going with the resistors. I was really surprised when I opened the package because Seven Circle had included a component lead bending tool, that little red piece of plastic that I'm using to bend the resistor leads. That way you don't damage the component when you bend them. And also it bends them to the exact width that you need for the PCB. It's really handy. I was about to order one, then I opened the box and there it was. So great. Thank you, Seven Circle. That was really nice. The next step would be to add the diodes. They're a little bit higher profile than the resistors. And since diodes are made out of silicon and not metal film or whatever the resistors are made of, they're a little bit more prone to heat damage. So when you solder, be sure to move rapidly. The next step is to place the ceramic capacitors. I have to use a microscope to read the numbers on the capacitors when I'm placing them on the bill of materials because they're very small. The next step would be to add the film capacitors and some larger components like jumpers. The steps are all listed in the assembly instructions. Then you're gonna add some semiconductors the transistors in this case, and they're silicon, so it's important to move rapidly. As you can see, I'm very rapid when it comes to soldering. Then we're gonna add the switches. This is where it gets really fun for me because you can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You put the power connector on, and then you get a second hand and you wire up that multi-position gray hill rotary switch. Now we're gonna fit the input transformer, solder that up, do the same thing for the output transformer, which has a lot of wires. Get those in there properly secure the transformer temporarily to the PCB. Then we're gonna move on to working on the input and output connectors. Next step is to tap the Neutrik input and output jacks for the 440 size thread. The handle I ordered wouldn't hold my tap firmly, so I was forced to use the power drill, which isn't really advisable, but I used a lot of oil and I would reverse it every quarter turn or so, and I was able to tap them pretty quickly with the power drill. When you're done tapping, you need to get all the little metal shavings and stuff out of the connector. So make sure you clean it really good before you attach it to the PCB, because one of those little bits of metal can go in and short out a component. The next step is really fiddly. You've got to attach the PCB and the transformer to the chassis panel, uh, which is really difficult. My kit didn't come with any nylon standoffs, but I always have some standoffs on hand, so I actually cut my own lengths. You need eighth inch, you need quarter inch, and then I had to even trim those down a little bit to get it to fit properly. It was really fiddly. Then I slid a piece of cardboard in to protect the components from shorting out on the panel while I ran a test. When the module is installed in the frame, the faceplate prevents it from touching the panel by virtue of its width. Now we start having some real fun. My chassis came pretty much assembled already with the power supply installed. All I had to do was hook up the power distribution lines and I put some anti-static bubble wrap down and I plugged in my thing. Now I'm gonna start tuning the local power supply resistors. The op amps that I chose were designed to run at 16 volts, but you can actually push them up to 20 volts plus minus DC if you want. 
I initially set these to run at 18, but when I was done filming the video, I turned it back down to 16 to be on the safe side. My concern with 500 series stuff in general is that it's designed to run at plus minus 16 volts DC, but when you get into audio electronics, you realize that the voltage rail is directly related to the amount of headroom in a design, but with this preamp, it's definitely about the character of the sound, not the headroom. Another factor to consider is that with the higher a voltage rail, the more heat's going to dissipate from your voltage regulators and your op amp. So with that being said, the place in my rack where I chose to put this preamp is right underneath a more thermally sensitive component. But I don't have enough room in the rack to put a blank space for airflow, so I chose to back my op amps down to 16 volts. The next step is to fit the op amp and to trim the DC offset. Then you've got to wait about 15 minutes until the module is completely warm and check the voltage offset again. It shouldn't really change. I ended up adjusting all the voltages again after the amp had completely warmed up. Then I hooked both the modules up and I ran audio through them to make sure they worked properly before I did a final voltage check and then mounted them in the chassis. Let's take a look at the op amp options. The op amps that I used were actually kits from Whistle Rock Audio. While I was on the DIY recording equipment website, I went ahead and picked up a set of louder than liftoff 2520 op amps just for safety in case the kits I built didn't work. So these are only about 19 or 20 bucks and they're fully assembled and they're ready to install. They use a couple surface mounted transistor pairs and stuff, but they are apparently really nice. I bought these just to be safe. Everybody uses these and they're apparently really good. Now on the 7th Circle Audio website, they used to offer a 2520 type op amp that they made, but if you look on their website, they're actually discontinued. I was very surprised when I opened up my package and I saw that they included a pair of their SC25 op amps, fully assembled, ready to mount. That was a really cool bonus and I had no idea they were going to come with the kit. Anyway, here they are, the 7 Circle Audio SC25, which is ready to go. I haven't tried this, and here's the Ladder Than Liftoff 2520 op amp. I haven't tried this one either. I've got them there just for safekeeping. In my studio, I really focus on making music, and I don't want to spend a lot of time comparing one op amp to another. They're all really good, and people love all of them. I'm really happy with the ones I've installed so far, but maybe eventually I'll try out one of these. The thing about this modular chassis, it's not that easy to take out the preamp to swap op amps. Here's what my two A12s look like racked up. They've got the nice stepped gray hill switch. They have an input trim, phantom power, and polarity reversal. I've been using this one to record all the audio for this video. So that one's going right now. The unit looks really nice racked up. I don't have any of the blanking panels that'll go here to cover up the blank holes. I'm not worried about that yet. I think the power supply lights are a little bright for my taste. So generally when I'm in here in the studio, I'll put a little piece of tape over them, darken them up a little bit. Thanks again for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you like the video, subscribe, hit the like button. Both of those things would be amazing. And I'll see you next time in another video.